On January 3rd, 2009, the Bitcoin blockchain was launched by the mysterious founder Satoshi Nakamoto. Nakamoto's ultimate goal with Bitcoin was to replace the current financial system that oppresses and controls humanity with a system that actually benefits humanity through fairness and decentralized control. Bitcoin addressed this by allowing peer-to-peer -peer payment transactions without the need for a third party acting as the middleman, making these transactions completely independent from all current financial systems. However, pretty soon after Bitcoin's launch, it became apparent to everyone that to replace the global financial system, Bitcoin needed to do a lot more than just have peer-to-peer -peer payment services. It would need to be faster, more reliable, have more features, and so many other factors which ultimately showed that Bitcoin was a breakthrough technology that couldn't fulfill its creator's goal. In response to this, a whole bunch of blockchain projects arose claiming they would be able to fulfill Bitcoin's original objective. Blockchains such as Ethereum, Polkadot, Cardano, and so many more. While some of these projects have seen moderate success, none of them have truly been a successor to Bitcoin's original concept. This was until 2019 when an experienced software developer who was responsible for groundbreaking research in the blockchain space and co-founding one of the most prominent Oracle solutions in the crypto space decided to create a blockchain. His goal with this blockchain was to throw out all preconceived notions of how cryptocurrency and digital assets should work and design the blockchain from scratch using a first principles approach. He would use all the knowledge that had been gained through 10 years of crypto development and research to create a blockchain that could ultimately fulfill Bitcoin's goal of replacing the current financial system. Oddly enough, this cryptocurrency had an uncanny resemblance to Bitcoin with its technical design and its philosophy. The blockchain this software developer created is Ergo, and it's a truly exciting ecosystem that is experiencing rapid development and adoption. It is poised to become one of the most widely used ecosystems in the world as it fulfills its goal of providing a decentralized financial system that will truly benefit humanity. But what makes Ergo a version 2.0 of Bitcoin? Well, let's begin with the commonalities between the two ecosystems before looking at how Ergo improves upon Bitcoin, starting with the philosophy of both ecosystems as this is what shapes everything else about their technical design. As we just mentioned, they both have the same intended goal of replacing the current financial system, but the similarities go much deeper than this, starting with their launch. Both of these blockchains launched in a very unique manner with no pre-distribution, pre-allocation, pre-sales, or pre-mining, meaning that literally nobody owned any of these coins without either buying them or mining them after the blockchain had launched. This type of launch is referred to as a fair launch, as most other cryptocurrencies launch with some sort of exclusive pre-sale for wealthy investors that means they can buy cryptocurrencies at a really cheap price that most people can't. Now on top of this fair launch, both Bitcoin and Ergo are 100% open source, meaning the actual computer code that makes up both blockchains is publicly available for scrutiny and screening. This is where a lot of crypto projects fail, as they conceal their code for the sake of maintaining a competitive advantage or to potentially hide the fact that they're a scam. This 100% transparency obviously extends to each ecosystem's monetary policy, which is at the core of the philosophy for both ecosystems. They both opted to adopt a deflationary monetary system by imposing a max supply of their native coins. For Bitcoin, it's 21 million and for Ergo, it's 97.74 million, with a bit of rounding. They've opted for these limits as inflationary systems always concentrate the vast majority of wealth in the hands of few people, which are typically the elites of societies. This in turn creates societal instability as when relative inequality between the top 1% and bottom 50% becomes too severe, societal unrest begins to emerge and bad stuff begins to happen. They both further ensured fairness by having a predetermined emission schedule that only emits newly generated coins as block rewards for miners who are supporting the network. They have similar schedules as they are both diminishing return schedules, although Ergo's is not as simplistic as Bitcoin's halving schedule. Now that we see the similar philosophy underpinning both of these ecosystems, let's take a look at how this flowed onto their technical design. The vast majority of cryptocurrencies in the world use a proof of stake consensus algorithm with an accounts-based transaction model. There are very few blockchains that utilize a proof of work consensus algorithm and even few that use a UTXO based transaction model. Two most notable blockchains that use these mechanisms are Bitcoin and Ergo. The reason that both of these blockchains elected to use a proof of work consensus algorithm is because it is the most secure way to validate a blockchain as it is significantly harder to work for the right to validate a block than it is to buy the right to validate a block. With a proof of stake consensus model, a nefarious government or corporation could use their immense wealth to buy enough coins in the blockchain that they can gain complete control over what happens on that blockchain. Whereas with proof of work blockchains, these bad actors would need to produce more work to gain complete control over the blockchain. They would have to do this by having more computing hardware working harder than the rest of the network this leads us to the transaction model Bitcoin and Ergo use, which is where we start to see a little variation. Now, they both use a UTXO transaction-based model. However, as Ergo needs to do more than just allow peer-to-peer -peer transactions, think things like program scripting and other smart contract functions, the UTXO model has to be extended, so to speak. 
thus making Ergo's transaction model an EUTXO transaction model. Now I won't go too in depth about EUTXOs here, but the simplest way to think about it is to think of EUTXOs as dollar denominated cash while the accounts based transaction model other blockchains use is more like a debit card. Now imagine trying to buy food and drinks from multiple vending machines with either a bank card or cash and think about how many ways you could exploit or break each method and you get some idea about why EUTXOs are a more reliable payment option. If you want to know the details about these transaction models, I'll leave some links below. Now while there are some other notable technical design similarities between Ergo and Bitcoin, we'll skip over them for the sake of time in this video. Let's move on to how Ergo builds upon the foundation Bitcoin set to offer a viable alternative to the current global financial system. So the first problem that was quickly identified after Bitcoin's launch was the extreme difficulty with processing complex financial transactions on its blockchain. In order to process transactions like insurance, lending or financial contracts, the blockchain would need more complex functionality and features. Features such as smart contracts, multiple signature wallets, ring signature wallets, Oracle solutions, a secure bridge on and off chain, privacy preserving mechanisms and lightweight computing requirements for transactions. Now, while many other blockchains out there have these features as part of their ecosystem, they've usually been implemented as part of a move fast and break things approach towards ecosystem development, resulting in these features usually missing, being underdeveloped, or being provided by an entirely separate blockchain made by a separate organization. The developers behind Ergo had seen this happen time and time again with various crypto ecosystems and ensured that they incorporated these essential features into the Ergo blockchain at a fundamental level. They did this by integrating all these key features into Ergo's purpose-built programming language, Ergo script. So as opposed to Ethereum, Solana or other big crypto ecosystems out there, Ergo actually has things like a token mixer, Oracle solution, multi-sig wallets and so many more features built in, meaning there isn't a reliance on external services like Chainlink or Tornado Cash for those who want to develop programs on Ergo. Let's take a look at some of these features to see how they will enable Ergo to process complex transactions and replace the global financial system. Starting with smart contracts. Now for those that don't know what these are, Dame is a little deceiving. While the contracts between two parties that automatically execute, they're more like a computer program that runs on the blockchain rather than a traditional contract. That being said, smart contracts will be used in the future for computer programming purposes, but most importantly as auto-executing contracts with digital assets. I won't go through an example for the sake of time, but I go through a pretty in-depth example in my Oracle pool video. So give that one a look if you're curious. Something that is essential for these smart contracts though is real world information that is getting information from off the blockchain onto the blockchain. Doing this while avoiding it coming from a single external source is called an Oracle solution. This is another feature that Ergo has built into its base layer, and it's actually better than most other Oracle solutions out there, including the most popular one, Chainlink. You see, most crypto ecosystems use Chainlink as their Oracle solution, which is a separate blockchain, meaning that every time a service uses it, there are a lot of unnecessary fees, complexity, and insecurity as opposed to using an inbuilt Oracle solution. Ergo's Oracle solution is also cheaper, more reliable and harder to corrupt. Again, check out the Oracle video if you're curious. So now a user on Ergo can set up a smart contract that can use data from the real world. But what if the two parties transacting want their transactions to not be publicly viewable? Or maybe one party is a business and they want multiple managers to sign off on the transaction. This is where a lot of other crypto ecosystems don't have a solution. Whereas Ergo, again, already has one built in the base layer. Ergo has built in multi-signature technology, ring signature technology, and signature anonymizing technology through the implementation of Sigma protocols. Now the multi-signature and ring signature tech, I won't go into too much, as if you ever worked in a business, you probably know how certain transactions and documents need to be signed off by by a manager or managers at a sufficiently high enough level. However, transaction anonymizing is such a crucial feature that is not widely implemented throughout most cryptocurrencies. But if you're a regular person, business or government, there is absolutely no way you can use any financial system that doesn't anonymize your transactions. At a personal level, if your rent payments were made public, your address could become compromised. If you're a business, publicly viewable transactions could compromise potential business deals. And if you're a government, well, I'll let you imagine how bad that could be. Essentially, any blockchain that doesn't have integrated transaction anonymizing services is not a serious contender for replacing the current financial system, including Bitcoin. So, Ergo on its own without any other blockchains can process smart contract transactions using real world data in a way that allows those transacting to protect privacy and ensure correct approvals for said transaction. The only other thing needed is a way for Ergo to interact with other programs and blockchains as not every piece of IT tech will be on a blockchain in the future. 
Ergo needs a way to ensure information is moved on and off chain securely, reliably, and most importantly, cheaply. This is where one of Ergo's most unique technologies that only proof of work blockchains can create delivers huge value. This technology is called Nepo Power. I won't go into too much depth about this. I'll leave some links below though. But the best way to think about this is Nepo Power, in layman's terms, translates to cheaply observable proof of validation. Basically, this allows for most computing devices to connect to the Ergo blockchain and verify transactions have occurred on it directly. Even things like phones, smartwatches, and other consumer technology. The lightweight and minimal nature of this technology means that if there is a blockchain or other digital service that wants to confirm a transaction has taken place on the Ergo blockchain, they can do this without having to download the whole blockchain to verify it. This is one of the problems with other blockchains. In order to interact with them and verify transactions, you have to basically run a server farm as a node on their network and be able to download terabytes worth of data. The last thing that Ergo improved upon from Bitcoin was a consensus algorithm. For those that don't know, a proof of work blockchain relies on everyone mining on said blockchain to reach agreement about what should be finalized onto the blockchain. When everyone agrees, consensus has been reached. As we touched on before, Ergo is a proof of work blockchain like Bitcoin, but after seeing the centralization problem that arose for Bitcoin, the Ergo developers realized they needed to disincentivize large scale mining operations. This is because if mining on Ergo becomes about who can buy the most computing hardware and use it at the cheapest cost, it will result in a few big miners rather than many small miners until eventually it becomes a Bitcoin situation where most of the computing power comes from a small handful of organizations. Ergo avoids this centralization by using memory hard functions in its consensus algorithm that make it cost inefficient to run large scale mining operations as miners do when mining Bitcoin. Instead, having a system that places emphasis on allowing the average person with an average gaming computer to be the predominant type of miner on the network and in turn incentivizing increased decentralization for the Ergo blockchain. So how is Ergo Bitcoin 2.0? Well, it takes the philosophy, technology, and lessons from Bitcoin and the decade of crypto development it spawned and improved upon all of it, making a more feature-rich, faster, more secure, and more decentralized blockchain that can truly replace the global financial system, as we all need, and as Satoshi was aiming to do with Bitcoin. I've had to skip over a lot of important stuff about Ergo to keep this video a reasonable length. Namely, the Sigma USD stablecoin, the speed and efficiency of Ergo, and the tremendous Ergo community. I'll be covering all of this in the future though, so keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, enjoy your day, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Toodles.